Uh, Urban Meyer gets whacked. Uh, you know, didn't know if it would happen in season. Him lasting the entire season seemed unlikely the way, you know, the, that whole situation unfolded there. Uh, that situation or not, Josh McDaniels is going to be a hot name again this year um, after kind of things cooling off with him and the end of Brady and the Patriots offense falling off a cliff the last couple of seasons. All of a sudden, he's going to be buzzy. I'd be shocked if he has a good opportunity that he turn. I don't think he'll be as selective this time around. If there's a good mm -hmm. opportunity out there, this might be the chance to get it. Um, and to me, the Jacksonville one, I'd be stunned if there isn't a wink, wink agreement already in place. Cause McDaniels to me seems perfect to head down there to a place where they wanted to build a program with urban Meyer didn't cause he's a, cause he's a dink. Um, and you know, wasn't ready to do it and was the wrong guy to do it. You want culture. Obviously, everybody wants the Patriots culture and wants a piece of that. And that's what everyone's striving to do. McDaniels on a second chance, having learned from his first failure um, and a quarterback. You need a quarterback whisperer because you don't know what kind of damage you've done to Trevor Lawrence in year one. This situation makes a ton of sense to me. I mean, for I mean, yeah. it's almost too much sense. Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, what we know now, the Jaguars are open. The Raiders are open. Yep. We think the Bears are going to be Bears, open at least. Right. Yep. And and you know, you look at those three jobs and you know, Chicago's certainly enticing because you got to think that Aaron Rodgers is probably going to be out of the division. The Vikings could fire Mike Zimmer. That's another one that could be open, but Rick Spielman's a very strong GM there. I don't see that working. That right. I don't think they have any, any relationship. Uh the the Lions of course are rebuilding. Uh the Packers will be rebuilding as far as their quarterback and so that has to be enticing, depending on how Josh McDaniels feels about Justin Fields. I do not think he was high up on the Patriots list uh, of quarterback prospects this year. Uh, Vegas would be enticing because you could set up your own sort of fiefdom there. I think, you know, Mark Davis, you have to look at the ownership and right. ask a lot of tough questions. But, he, you know, he, he leaves people alone for the most part and, you know, lets you do what you're going to do. But you're in a division with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert for the next 10 years, and you don't have a quarterback of the future. So that's a tough job. To me, I agree with you. I think that Jacksonville is the best job. Uh, you you know, the, the Colts will be good. Mike Vrabel's there. Uh, so the, the Titans will always be good. But there's no dominant team. There's no dominant quarterback you're, in that division. You're also getting a runway. They want you there to build something for the long haul, not to win tomorrow in Jacksonville. Right. But the problem is, is like, you know, the the uh, I have a lot of respect for Shad Khan and his son Tony Khan. Uh, you know, I know Tony pretty well. Uh, they're really good people, and they really do want to win. Uh, they make a lot of mistakes. I don't know who they're listening to. You get a lot of these owners who listen to certain people, like, you know, Mark Davis will listen to John Madden. I don't know what kind of shape he's in these days, but he hopefully, for McDaniel's sake, he also listens to Ron Wolf, who Ron Wolf. The father of Elliot Wolf, who is now in the Patriots personnel department, Ron Wolf was here all during training camp, so he got an up close look at Josh McDaniels, and he might go to Mark Davis and be like, "Dude, Josh McDaniels is your guy. Like he's right. ready to be the next Belichick." But as far as Jacksonville goes, you know the cons have screwed up a lot of things. They are usually patient with their with their guys, whether it was Gus Bradley or Doug Marone or the 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 uh, the, uh, the GM that they had there, David Caldwell. Uh, but you know, if they're serious, like they have to do what's better for best for Trevor Lawrence. Like he is the franchise quarterback. You cannot screw him up again, right. but here's the problem. The cons sunk a lot of money into urban Meyer, a lot that they're going to have to, even if urban Meyer, you can fire him without, with cause to get out of the rest of his contract. They still signed a lot of assistance with, for a lot of money for a lot of years that they're going to have to eat. A lot of times in these situations, you get owners who say, you know what, I'm just going to try to piece this together. You know, I already have the GM in place, Trent Baalke. You know, Daryl Bevel is here. He's Trevor Lawrence's offensive coordinator. He can make it work. He's been an offensive coordinator. He's been on the precipice. He's interviewed for jobs before. Why don't I just make him the permanent guy and see if that, if, if that can get by? Or you get a Jim Caldwell or a Byron Leftwich. Byron Leftwich has no head coaching experience. They, I could see them trying to get by for a couple of years to sort of, you know, mitigate the loss of Urban Meyer. To me, that would be another humongous mistake by them. Yeah. Basically, they you need to say, 
who is the best person for Trevor Lawrence? And when you look around and you see what Josh McDaniels has done with Mac Jones, what he's done with Matt Castle, what he's done with Jimmy Garoppolo, let alone his working relationship with Tom Brady, I don't yeah. know. I, I don't know if there's a better candidate out there. And if they're serious about, like you said, changing the culture, becoming a winner, some people scoff at the Jacksonville job. To me, what was Foxborough when Bill Parcells got here? Like very similar stadiums, didn't look like much of a future, outpost, games blacked out, all that stuff. Like to me, if you're McDaniels, you go there, the division isn't that great. You you get to turn things around. There's not much media there. You're basically left alone to do what you want. To me, I think it's a great job. And and the Jaguars would be fools if they yeah. didn't seriously consider Josh McDaniels. And again, it makes sense. The two things that are going to hurt Josh, um, obviously, you know, his first go round and how spectacularly bad, how Urban Meyer level bad it was there uh, and how quickly that unraveled to the Belichick coaching tree and everybody who's gone in there and tried to stuff Patriots culture into whatever organization they went in with the my way or the highway sort of approach and that blew up completely and you have you see it going bad uh with judge as well there uh with the giants patricia uh was was a unmitigated disaster in detroit and then third that flake out so again all of these things are still spiraling over uh mcdaniel's head uh, you don't know it really only takes one but it also only takes one of those things for any one of those owners to just have him on their do not draft list so to speak you're yeah, no, he's great, but I'm not going near there. Just th there's too much mm -hmm. baggage associated. So it's hard to know how people feel. I'll ask you, do you think s some of that stuff has the, you know, spurning the Colts that first time around or whatever he did in his first time through has, uh, has dissipated in league circles? A little bit. I think people are still, you know, they're, they're very cautious about, um, you know, Josh and I'm, and I'm sure they will, get things in writing very early on. The Colts never got things in writing. <laughs> right. um, you know, and, and look, a lot of it was not, and and he'll have, he knows he has to have explanations for all this stuff because that and Denver are two of the top things that he's going to be asked about. Yep. And he needs to have good answers to those questions. And, you know, the first, with, with, the, with the Colts, you know, what ended up happening as far as I know is that you know, and, and this is something that I'm going to write for BSJ at some point. And a lot of this is Bill's fault. You know, he and, and God love Bill. And I understand. And it's good for the Patriots. But like, you know, it's not all about the Patriots when you have people working for you. Um, you know, he can be singularly focused. But, you know, you could take a couple hours to have a conversation with Josh McDaniels before the end of the season. And it should happen very soon. Like he could have had it during the bye week where you let Josh know exactly where you stand and how does it, how long does it look like you're going to coach? The problem the first time around is Bill's so singularly focused th that Josh did not talk yeah. to Belichick Can't and the be bothered. Class about yeah. his future until the season was – until he already agreed with the Colts. Suddenly the season ends. He's getting ready to go on a plane. Suddenly Bill's like, uh, Josh, I'd like to talk to you. And then he comes in and he hears all this great stuff from Bill about Josh. You know, you're, you, you know, you're you're such a valuable piece here. You know, I I couldn't do a lot of this without you. Look, I I don't know what was said. I'm just making things up. But you know, I, there's a lot of things I couldn't do here without you. You yeah. know, you're basically the head coach in the offense. Like I want to give yeah, you a humongous you're... raise. I want you here. And like suddenly Josh is like, what? I, yeah, I have never yeah. heard any of this stuff. Yeah, your so wife has her. Yeah, your wife has her bags packed and she's at the door and you tell her you love her and, you know, for the first time, you know, it's like, exactly, it's, you can't wait that long. But again, you don't know also, are there assurances in place? That's the last thing is, yeah. is there, is there a, okay, I don't know if it's two years, but it's a three to five year window. And I, as soon as that's done, we don't even interview another guy. It's yours, buddy. And if that's in place, that would be a different story as well. But you don't know if that. If, if anything like that was ever agreed upon or discussed. As far as I know, it has not been. Um, I do think part of the equation is, I don't know if McDaniels or a lot of people want to be the guy that, that, uh, they replace follow bill. Yeah. Follow bill because you're basically in a no win situation and all of a sudden you're George Seifert. How is George Seifert viewed? Those right. titles aren't his, they're bill yeah. Walsh's. And, you know, so all of a sudden bill gets the quarterback and gets things tuned up and say, they win a Super Bowl or two in the next five and suddenly you step in 
and you win a Super Bowl title, who do you think is going to get credit for that? Ain't Josh McDaniels. It's Bill Belichick. And so a lot of people, it appeals to them to go start their own thing from scratch. And I, I, I think that's part of the equation. But to me, it's incumbent upon Bill as a human being especially after what happened last time with that last hiring process. To make it clear. McDaniels yeah. got screwed out of even interviewing for the Giants job that went to Joe Judge. And so Bill basically owes Josh one. And he needs to either make clear to him right now what the future is and what he wants and give him another raise and say, don't go on these job interviews before he even does. You know, if you want him here and you want to make him an offer, make him it now. You know, or otherwise, give your blessing for everything. You know, the, the rules have changed. They can now interview the final two weeks of the season yep. if there's an opening, if the t- uh, approves of it. If that's the case, Bill cannot stand in Josh's way. He has to let yep. him interview after what happened last time. It'll be fascinating to see what happens. Yep. So that's going to be buzzy. And as you said, the rules have changed a little bit. So we might have more clarity on this situation earlier than you normally would with a bi week interview situation really being the only opportunity, um, you know, for this thing to come up. Um, so we'll see what happens. A uh, lot of NFL jobs going to be available. We mentioned lots of them. Speaking of new jobs, if you want to get one, we've got a great deal for you where you can head on over to LinkedIn Talent Solutions and get that taken care of. <laughs> 